My brothers and sisters, Surah Al-Ankabut is a surah named after the spider and mention is made of the spider and its web. And the fact that that web is such a weak home and those who call out to gods besides Allah, they are similar to those who are seeking refuge in a spider web from the adversity. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know that that house or the spider web is actually so weak, you cannot seek assistance in anyone or anything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nor can you worship someone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that was the reason of naming the surah after the spider is to draw the comparison between the spider and its home and those who call out to gods besides Allah, the type of security they would like to achieve from this particular calling, which is wrong. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. May we save ourselves by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from doing that which will earn the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, the opening verses of Surah Al-Ankabut, which is the 29th Surah of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala draws our attention to the entire purpose of creation of mankind. And that purpose has been made mention of in many places in the Quran, but it is to test us who from amongst us has better deeds. So in Surah Al-Mulk as well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about it and he says, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا It is he who has created death and life in order to test you who from amongst you has better deeds. So I'm in competition, you are in competition, everyone is in competition to do what? To do better deeds for the sake of Allah. Whoever does the best deeds is the most successful. The comparison is with whom? The comparison is with whatever you are able to do. You need to do better than what you are doing right now. That is what it is. So if I was doing something less, today I need to do more and tomorrow I need to do even more. That is when I know that I have done the best possible according to my capacity given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this surah, Allah says, do people think that it is sufficient for them to say we are believers? We are believers. And then they will not be tested regarding that claim of theirs, regarding that belief. We've spoken about this a few days ago and I'm going to repeat it because my brothers and sisters, when you say you believe in Allah, then you need to substantiate and prove that claim. I believe in Allah. So Allah says, okay, you believe in me. Yes, I do. Well, then I'm going to take some things away from you. Do you still believe in me? Yes, I do. I'm going to give you a lot. Do you still believe in me? Yes, I do. I'm going to take life away from those around you whom you love. Do you still believe in me? Yes, I do. Then you have passed the test. Alhamdulillah. But if something that happens to you in your life happens to sway your belief in Allah, then you were not truthful in that belief. That's why Allah says, when you say you're a believer, then you are now going to be tested by us. Be prepared for the tests. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. For indeed, my brothers and sisters, it might seem simple to word, but every one of us goes through problems in our lives. We were not created on earth in order to do as we please, because there will come a day in paradise when we will be allowed to do as we please. Whatever we want, we will be able to do there. As for this dunya, look at us, subhanallah. We suffer with the throat infection. We have a bit of a cough. We have a sickness, a disease. The other one is struggling. This is not what we wanted, but we will endure for the sake of Allah. We will endure for the sake of Allah. We will be happy. We will be content. We will continue for as long as Allah allows us to continue. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us. So in the same surah, Allah makes mention of others whom he tested. He speaks of Thamud, he speaks of Ad, these are the nations. He speaks of Fir'aun, he speaks of Qarun, he speaks of Haman, the haughtiness of the Pharaoh, the arrogance of Qarun. Subhanallah, the disobedience of Haman, the fact that Fir'aun thought that he was the God, he used to tell everyone he was the God. So Allah says in verse number 40, we gave them messengers, we tested them, we tried them, they failed the test. So. Each one of them, we punish them because of their sin. 
Each one of them, we gave them a chance. We gave them respite. Then we punished them. And each one of them's punishment was tailor-made for them. So Allah says, some of them Allah sent adverse weather conditions to destroy them strong winds and heavy rainfall etc some of them what is known as the loud yell the tremor that which destroyed them some of them we caused the earth to swallow them some of them we drowned them like the people of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam and even the Pharaoh himself drowned so Allah says remember Allah did not oppress them Allah did not harm them they harmed themselves they asked for trouble subhanallah you cannot challenge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brothers and sisters if we saw a lion in a wild park you and I know coming from Africa you don't mess with a lion no matter what you don't mess with an elephant you don't mess with wild animals you need to know what you're doing and you need to be always on standby imagine if you were to see a wild animal how would you treat or how would you carry yourself in the presence of the wild animal you would be very careful now if Allah has warned us of a punishment how would we carry ourselves in the face of such punishment we would be very careful too in fact the latter is far more serious than the former may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to save ourselves from the torment and the adverse effects of our own deeds so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also then in the same surah speaks about how people's level of conviction in Allah differs with differing times this is why Allah does not keep all the times the same today you might not be fearing tomorrow you are scared about something because you're scared Allah says as a result of the fear you came closer to Allah sometimes when we are on an aircraft subhanallah we tend to be so excited and happy that we're going on holiday until we start enduring or feeling or going through a little bit of turbulence on the plane when the turbulence happens, you know what happens? People start saying, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Ashhadu Allah, Ilaha illallah, Ashhadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah, Astaghfirullah, Oh Allah, forgive me, Oh Allah, this. Why? Because you don't know whether you're going to touch the ground or not, right? So the level of conviction is different. Allah speaks about it in the surah, verse number 65 of Surah Al Ankabut. Allah says, فَإِذَا رَكِبُوا فِي الْفُلْكِ دَعَوُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينِ فَلَمَّا نَجَّاهُمْ إِلَى الْبَرِّ إِذَا هُمْ يُشْرِكُونَ When they used to sail on the ships in the waters that were very rough, they used to call out to Allah sincerely alone without partners they used to call out to Allah alone oh Allah we are on the ship you are the owner save us oh Allah and Allah says as soon as we saved them they went back to their bad ways of association of partnership with Allah how many of us my brothers and sisters we promise Allah things when we need something from him we promise him oh Allah I quit my ways I won't do this I won't do that as soon as your problem is solved you forgot that you ever used to call out to Allah in the past as though nothing happened save yourselves save yourselves from this type of behavior by fulfilling the promise unto Allah you made a promise to Allah fulfill the promise unto Allah keep trying if you've faltered and you've gone wrong go back say oh Allah I promised you I broke that promise forgive me for having broken it I'm going to go back to that promise and I'm going to live by it may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us let's move on to the next surah surah to Rome surah to Rome is named after the Romans and the conflict that used to take place between the Persians and the Romans however in that surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of creation the signs of Allah I'm sure tonight we read the surah we read these verses I'm sure you may have heard the Imam repeat وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ so many times in the verses and from among the signs of Allah is the following and the signs of Allah is the following so let's read a few of these وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ تُرَابٍ from the signs of Allah is that he created you from dust all of you then فَإِذَا أَنْتُمْ بَشَرٌ تَنْتَشِرُونَ Verse number 31. He created you from dust and suddenly you were humankind spread all over. Imagine we were created from one source 
Allah created us. Today we are all over the globe and we are so distant from one another, not realizing we are brothers and sisters. That's who we are. We belong to the same species and we are related and connected. And if you were bothered, you would find a relationship very near between myself and yourselves, perhaps seven, 10, 15 grandfathers, a little bit more, perhaps slightly less in some instances. It is true. We are related, subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand this relationship. And when I say related, I'm talking about blood because we were created one mother, one father. It's just that it's gone a little bit far down. So that's why we are oblivious of it. We don't know it. We become tribes. We become enemies. We become people who transgress and oppress against one another, who try to harm one another, who try to block one another from receiving and achieving goodness. May Allah not do that to us. We need to save ourselves. Go back and think because Allah says the fact that you are human all over the world is a sign of Allah. It's a sign of Allah. So uphold it and make sure that you understand it. Then Allah says in the next verse, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا From the signs of Allah is that He created for you, from you, your spouse. Your spouses. To do what? Why do I need a wife? Why does a wife need a husband? لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً if you are genuine and you are truthful, Allah will create between the two of you two things, mawadda and rahma. That means love and mercy. You love your spouse and you are merciful towards your spouse and your family members. That was created by Allah. It's a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are married. There should be a sense of possessiveness. If you lack that possessiveness, it is a sickness. Some people come and say, you know, my husband is a little bit too possessive. Well, that's a good sign. But let that possessiveness not become a burden because then it might become a problem. However, it is good to be possessive. We are all possessive over our things. Your children, your family members, alhamdulillah. It's a sign of Allah. He wanted to create a connection between you so that you can achieve peace, comfort and solace with one another or from one another. Subhanallah, what a great sign of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, let's save ourselves from the disasters that are occurring within marriage by going back to our homes and resolving our disputes, our matters, clearing our record. The more we involve in haram, the less sweet the halal will be. If you want halal to be sweet, you need to stay away from haram. And I promise you, you will appreciate halal. But the more you involve in that which is prohibited outside of marriage or fornication, adultery, etc., the less you will appreciate what Allah has bestowed upon you. And when you involve in haram, you will not be able to save yourself from the bad thoughts, from lack of appreciation of the gold mine that you have. Subhanallah. Some people have a spouse that subhanallah is amazing, but they don't see the light in the spouse because they are busy doing something else somewhere else. They don't realize and when they lose the spouse then they hit their heads to say you know what i lost someone great well you were fooling around may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us may allah help us to actually go back home and to understand your spouse is one of the signs from the signs of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after making mention of so many of these beautiful points allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa min ayatihi خَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافُ أَلْسِنَتِكُمْ وَأَلْوَانِكُمْ All these verses from verse number 30 going all the way down. A few of them, they are similar in wording. Allah says from His signs that He has created the heavens and the earth. He created different creatures and He created you with all different أَلْسِنَتِكُمْ Your languages and your colors. All the diversity is a sign of Allah. The fact that someone is black, someone is white, someone is yellow, someone is pink. All these are the signs of Allah. Someone speaks in the accent we speak in. Someone speaks in a different accent, a different language. Subhanallah, these are the signs of Allah. He created all this diversity so that we don't get bored on earth. It's a sign of Allah. If all of us spoke the same language, all of us looked exactly the same, all of us did everything exactly the same, it would be very boring. Life would be so boring, subhanallah. You would have to line up and get married to the next number, subhanallah. That's what it would be. Imagine, who are you married to? Four, five, six. And you? 
Ah, four, five, seven. Okay. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. But Allah created different likes. You might like something I don't and I might like something you don't. Subhanallah. The same applies to food. If Allah wanted, we could have had capsules every day, morning, suhoor and iftar. One capsule and you're done. But Allah gave you apples and bananas and pears and oranges and meat and beef and chicken and fish and what have you. And different types of vegetables and so on. This is all the gift of Allah. He made it diverse. He says that is a sign of Allah. Sit and think about it. Save yourselves from belittling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by considering the various gifts he has bestowed upon you. If you don't, you're belittling Allah. He gave you colors. Imagine the colors we have. What if everything was just black and white? Subhanallah. The colors we have. Today we are dressed with so many different colors. I remember someone asking me, why do you wear a different color every day? Well, I can tell you today so that the viewers can know that today is a different day. They need to listen. I haven't yet seen this particular color. I think this is a different talk. That's the true reason. Subhanallah. There's no other reason. If you recall, I was in this masjid many years ago and I only had one of these. And people used to say, but I think I heard this. And I said, no, brother, listen to it. You haven't heard it. They had to go via the number of the episode. Now they've got to go via the color. Have you watched the green? No, I haven't. <laughs> Have you seen the blue? No, I haven't. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us. <laughs> this is a sign that Allah has bestowed upon us. It's a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Really, these colors we appreciate. And that's just one example, but there are so many other examples that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. Then we all would like to see a lot of increase in what we have. When you have a salary, you want an increase. When you have money, you want to invest it and get more. And so, but you need to do it the proper way. So Allah draws our attention towards saving ourselves from earning in the wrong way. Because even though the number might be big, but in reality, it's not a profit. It's a loss. Listen to what Allah says regarding those who consume interest. They give their money to people in order to get back a percentage of interest. No matter what they call it. Allah says in verse number 39 of Surah Al-Rum. Allah says, وَمَا آتَيْتُم مِّن رِبًا لِيَرْبُوَ فِي أَمْوَالِ النَّاسِ فَلَا يَرْبُوا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ that wealth which you give to the people in order to get interest so that you can increase your wealth, it does not increase in the eyes of Allah. It is actually not correct. It is a burden. So save yourselves. Allah says, وَمَا آتَيْتُم مِّن زَكَاةٍ تُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُضْعِفُونَ that which you give in charity for the sake of Allah, that which you have learned to take out from your possession and reach out to others with it who are also related to you somehow. Subhanallah. The relation part, I've got it from the previous verse, right? But I'm saying you take out from your pocket as a charity. Allah says that is what we will multiply. Look at the irony. You're giving something away. Allah says that's multiplied. You're earning something. Allah says that's a loss. Have you seen? If you're earning it the wrong way, Allah says that's a loss. It's not a profit. You cheated. You've lost. You failed the test. But if you're giving something away, Allah says, wow, we will multiply it for you. هُمْ الْمُضْعِفُونَ They are the ones whom they will have a multiplication. It will multiply. So the Quran is encouraging us to be charitable. It's telling us that by being charitable, you are actually multiplying your sustenance, your happiness, your connection with Allah, your connection with the rest of the people. So let us take heed, my brothers and sisters. Reach out to one another in the most beautiful way. If you don't have something material to give, then at least through your character, your conduct, your goodness, your kind words, your loving words. We have brothers and sisters. I promise you, every one of us, whether we are seated here or listening or viewing, whatever it is, we have goodness in us without exception. There is goodness in us. When we talk about one another, try and pick out the goodness and talk about the good that the people have. Why do we only have to pick on the bad that someone has done? And that is one out of a hundred of the things they do. And that is the topic. And that is what we know them as. This is a bad man. But subhanallah, pick on the good. It's a charitable act. You are reaching out. If you have something that you need to correct someone for, go and correct them. But in a respectable manner, this is how we will earn the pleasure of Allah. Then, People want to know why is all this happening on earth? Allah has the answer. Look at the globe today. There is corruption. There is chaos on earth. Why? Allah says it's not us. It's you. Subhanallah. You did it. We didn't do it. 
But oh Allah, you are in control. We know we are in control. We gave you a capacity. We allowed you to do certain things and you're doing the wrong thing. That's what Allah is telling us. Listen to verse number 41 of Surah Al-Rum. ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس ليذيقهم بعض الذي عملوا لعلهم يرجعون Allah says on earth and at sea the chaos has become rampant and apparent the disasters are clear because of what man has done himself that's why the disasters are there that's why the calamities are there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in order for them to taste the repercussion of their own actions if you keep on insulting Allah one day you will pay for it if you keep on committing evil one day it's going to come to bite you if you keep on stealing one day you will be jailed if you keep on doing something bad don't think that it's not going to come back to you it has to come back to you so Allah says we are allowing you to taste the reaction of your action your deeds now this is the result of it we are allowing you to taste this so that they may return to us the reason Allah says why you taste a lot of disaster to soften you so that you can come back towards us some people when they see disaster across the globe no matter where it is they get closer to Allah they start crying in salah oh Allah my brothers are suffering in this country that place this place help us oh Allah I am going to improve myself I'm going to become a better person and you have said that if we all become better you will improve the condition of the ummah so I'm going to contribute ya Allah so what happens the ummah improves but a lot of us no we see what's happening across the globe. The only thing we do is we WhatsApp about it, we tweet about it, and we send messages on social media about it, and we blame everyone but ourselves. Everyone is a robber and a crook and a criminal and, and, and an oppressor. We blame this place and that place and this country and this person and so on. And we forget about us in the equation when Allah says, all this is happening for every one of you to reflect so that you can come back closer to Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is just a solution of the Quran. It's not from me. It's not from my pocket, but it is Allah drawing our attention, myself included, that you know what? Turn back to Allah. Go back to Allah. Come. Soften up. Allah will grant ease in the dunya. Allah will keep you content. My brothers and sisters, let's learn to love one another. Wallahi, let's learn to feel enough for one another that we improve ourselves. When something is going wrong, ask yourself, how can I improve this myself? What should I do within my life so that I can be an asset? If I'm an asset to my society and community and everyone thinks the same, the effect will be reaching the whole globe. The problem is we don't think so broad. We think within a small circle that you know what? It's not my problem. It's happening far away. It's happening far away. Those are your brothers, your sisters. Today, the globe is such that a problem can travel across the globe in a split second because of social media. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness in the dunya and the akhirah. We move on to the next beautiful surah, Surah Luqman. And I've chosen very little from this particular surah to speak about regarding saving ourselves. Many of us seated here, we may be Muslims who were born Muslims, mashallah. We have parents. We need to fulfill the rights of our parents. The Quran has instructed us, Surah Luqman, the advice of Luqman alayhi salam to his son to save himself from disaster, from calamity. He gave his son some beautiful advice. Some of it was regarding parents. Subhanallah. And this advice is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah chose your parents, whether they are Muslim or not, Allah chose them. Whether they are good or not, Allah chose them. Whether they are sinful or not, Allah chose them. Why did he choose them? As a test for you. That's what it is. It was a test. Allah created you in order to bring you here. He chose a path. That path, he decided it. Whether you like it or not, that's your father. No matter what he's done, he's your father. You cannot take it away. On the day of judgment, whether he was a terrible man or not, you will be called with his name. That's your father. Even if someone took your name away, you will be called with your father's name. On the day of Qiyamah. And I'm not making a mistake there. Subhanallah. That was given to you by Allah. Allah says, Ud'uhum li aba'ihim huwa aqsatu Allah. Call them with their father's names because that 
is more just in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to hide lineage is actually a major sin. If you are intentionally hiding someone's lineage, then you have perpetrated such a heinous crime that only Allah knows what he will do with such a person. Obviously, it would require tawbah. It would require the seeking of forgiveness. So don't hide someone's lineage intentionally. They don't even know who they are. You've hidden it from them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah make it easy for us to make amends. But in Surah Luqman, Allah says, Allah has indeed advised you very strongly regarding goodness to your parents. Be kind to your mother, your father. She can be a non-Muslim. He could be a drug addict. Be kind to him. Be kind to her. Be respectful in your words. You do not obey a, an instruction that is against Allah's command. That is for sure. But you still respect the individual. That's your mom. You respect your dad no matter what. You say kind words. If you want to correct them, you correct them in a beautiful way. You do not insult them. You don't swear them. You don't hurt their feelings unnecessarily. Meaning if they are hurt just because you don't want to adopt something haram, they are telling you to adopt, then it is unfortunate. But we are talking of that hurt that comes from you for nothing. Swearing, insulting, cheating, and so on. Your own father. This is a very strong piece of advice. Why? Because your, the parenthood is sacred. That's what it is. It was chosen by Allah. You might not have been brought up by your parents. So what? They are still your parents. They may have abandoned you and dumped you. They failed their test. But you don't fail it as a result. You pray for them. You may not want to associate with parents who are toxic. Because nothing good comes out of them. But be kind to them. There's nothing that stops you from being good in your words. Subhanallah, keep praying. Why not? They could, they could change as a result of your dua. So this is a piece of advice. Every day we are speaking about how parents are actually abusing their children. Today we are speaking about how children are abusing their parents. That's your mother. I promise you to hurt the feelings of your mother. You will pay a heavy price. Yes, it is a different thing if your mother just feels hurt for any small thing. Subhanallah. You know, she wants you to stand on one leg and if you don't, she gets hurt. That's ridiculous. But we're talking about that which is normal, that which is completely acceptable. And you begin to insult your mother. You begin to talk to her as though she is your child or your baby. And you begin to talk to her as though she works for you and she is fit for all the worst words possible. Be careful. Watch your tongue. My brother, you want to get to Allah. My sister, you want to come closer to Allah. Do it through your parents. The Prophet wasallam says, At loss is a person who has witnessed one or both of his or her parents and has not earned Jannah through their service. At old age, you witnessed your parents. You need to help them. When you were a kid, they took you wherever they could. They cleaned you, they cleansed you, they fed you. Had they not done that, you probably would have been dead. One might argue, well, my parents didn't look after me. So what? If they failed their test, you don't have to fail your test as a result. You don't get the answers wrong. Respect them. Still, say a good word. So that is the point I want to drive home today. My brothers and sisters, it's absolutely important that we go out of our way to respect our parents, no matter who they are. Muslim, non-Muslim, sinful or pious, no matter, even if they are being a burden, even if they are making our lives so difficult, respect them. Say a kind word. When they are wrong and you have to disobey something that they are saying because it's in the transgression of Allah or they are being ridiculous and you have to fight your parents in front of the ulama because sometimes they might be, let me give you a simple example, they might be blocking a marriage for no reason besides that which is their own whims and fancies and you are going to an arbitrator to seek a middle path, you may do so but respectfully. If your father was wrong, he is wrong. And inshallah, he will be proven wrong, but with respect. So you don't compromise the respect issue. I hope you've understood it. That's the thing we're talking about. Because today people think, you know, my dad is wrong. He, that's it. They call them bad words. Be careful. That dad was chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, that was just a verse from Surah Luqman. There are still so many verses in Surah Luqman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this man, Luqman, told his son so many things. One of them was 
that you can never hide from Allah, no matter what you do, no matter where, whatever is, whether it is inside of a rock or at the bottom of a rock or in the darkest part of the earth, Allah will bring it forth. No matter how small it is, you can never ever hide from Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, we will continue with this tomorrow.